Here's a list of the equipment and ingredients we'll be using today. Using a very large pumpkin can make it very difficult to cut and you may also not have room on your baking tray. Step one is to preheat your oven to around 140 degrees. Next up, gather your equipment. Now I use a tea towel under my chopping board just so that it doesn't move around quite so much. You'll need a chopping board, small bowl, a spoon, kitchen knife and a baking tray. So have these all ready to hand. Oh, and don't go forgetting, you'll need your pumpkin too. Making the first cut into your pumpkin can be a challenge. You want to work to the side of the stem and not try to cut through it. Now I place my knife on the top of the pumpkin and gently rock it back and forth to create a line or cut to work with. And then I cut down through the pumpkin on one side, turn my pumpkin round, hold on the top, put my knife back into that line or cut that I made, keep a hold securely and then slice through on that other side. And now here comes the messy bit. If you find it difficult touching things that have certain textures, you might want to wear gloves for this part or ask somebody else to do it for you. I'm going to be using my small bowl and spoon. And what I'm going to do is scrape against the flesh, so the dense part of the pumpkin to remove the seeds and the stringy bits that hold the seeds in place. So just scrape against that flesh and try and pull away those seeds and then place them into my small bowl. Now you can save these seeds, you can use them for other cookery, or if you've grown your own or managed to get your pumpkin from a farm, you can also save these seeds, clean them and store them and use them for planting next year to grow your own pumpkins. Next up, we're going to cut our pumpkin into wedges. So I want to work with the flat side down on my chopping board, which will mean that my pumpkin is more secure for me to work with, which is safer for me. And I do the same thing here by rocking my knife backwards and forwards to create that first line or cut to break through that tough skin of the pumpkin and then slice through and create wedges or slices. And if you need to, don't be afraid to turn that edge piece round so that you can hold on to it more securely when cutting. So we've put our first cut of pumpkin wedges onto our baking tray. And now we're going to repeat the same process with the rest of our pumpkin. So I'm going to take out the rest of the seeds from my pumpkin, put them in the bowl, scraping against all that flesh. And then I'm going to get ready to cut the rest of it into wedges. With all your pumpkin wedges on your baking tray, we're now going to pop them into the oven for around 25 minutes. Which gives you time to clean down your working area and wash up your equipment. After 25 minutes, check your pumpkin. It should be soft and squishy, and you may even notice some of the wedges have started to break apart. And now leave your pumpkin to cool completely. 
roughly about one to one and a half hours. Once the pumpkin has cooled, we're going to remove the flesh from the skin. Now this is a bit like removing the peel from a banana. I'm going to hold my wedge and then using my spoon, I'm going to scrape down the skin to pull the flesh away and add it into my bowl. And now the fun bit, you get to blend, mash or mix your pumpkin. Keep blending, mixing or mashing until your pumpkin is completely smooth. And next you can move your pumpkin out into containers if you're going to want to store it or you can use it immediately. And kept in the fridge will keep for around two to three days. Pumpkin puree will form the basis of many of the dishes we'll be showing this week. Any guesses for how many pumpkins social media Joe had to roast this week? 